Finding the right design inspirations for your design project is an essential part of the design process. Also, this is a part of the process that I have a whole lot of fun doing. We all should be having fun in this stage because this is where we get to explore other professional designers' creativity while getting our own creative juices flowing. Now, a very common place to find design inspirations would be something like Dribble, Behance, Awards.com, and back in the days, which is really just a few years ago, those were my go-to resources. But I've evolved the way I found my design inspirations. One of the things that are very important to me when finding a design inspiration is I want to see a real world use case. I'm building sites for clients. And so we want to find a design inspiration, ideally if it's a live website or something that could be built into a live website. So what I want to do inside this video, I want to share you three other ways to find design inspirations and to help you on your creative journey. Design resource number one, that is building your own library of dope websites, websites that you love. Now I had used a tool called Range and I use a free version of it. I have the app on my phone. I have it on my iPad. It's on my Macs. It's with me everywhere I go. So anytime I see a dope website, a website I really like, there's something done on it I like, I save it and I categorize it and I start building up this library. And I've been doing this for about a year now. And now my library of sites is huge. I got all kinds of categories going on. And this is a great place to start because I have this library of live actual websites that there's styles that I like, but I could see them live on the web so I could see how they could be applied to a real world case that I would use for a client project. Resource number two, this is going to be UI kits. All right, I started utilizing these recently. Not only are they good for design inspirations, but they're also good for when I want to use things like graphics and certain design elements inside of them. There are a lot of good platforms to find some really good quality UI kits. This is my go-to right here. It's UI 8.net. Uh, it does cost. It's not that cheap. I'm going to be honest with you, but you're getting a lot of high quality designs. And if you're doing a lot of design work, well, you could get enough assets out of here. That definitely makes the price worth it. Now, there are other options as well, like Evanto Elements, uh, where you could find some good stuff, but you got to sift through a whole lot of rubbish to find the gems. Now, how I would use this is I first would skip past all the mobile stuff that is because well i'm building websites and that's what i'm looking for i'm looking for ui kits that have desktop versions uh so i could use those so we go through them and i could see okay we got something for really cool banners right over here i could see an inspiration for a coffee shop and i will look for something based on the project that i'm on also i'm looking for the style that i am aiming for and then sometimes you could find some really good kits in here that have several different designs like here is one that i have now this one came from ui8 i downloaded it it had several different uh, desktop layouts right here it has 10 of them and this is a really good starting point like I could use this for my inspiration I could see how the whole design will look how it will flow not only that I could use some assets right here like maybe I like this uh, arrow I could take this arrow I could download the SVG and use it inside of a project you know, something like this. Let's say we want to make an image with these uh, graphics right over here. I could take these graphics, I could change that image around, and bam, now I got a really cool image graphic. And then this gives me the inspiration and ideas to use for a project. Now, everything that I'm doing here on Figma is a free version. And if you don't use Figma and you're, this is just not your thing, you don't have to use Figma just to design. You could use it as a tool in many other areas as well. The thing though I do like a lot about using UI kits like this versus going to like say a place like Dribble is because I get to see the whole layout. I get to see, you know, the sizing, I get to see how the whole page will flow and look where just using something like Dribble, which is not bad by the way, but 
you know, I'm just getting screenshots of parts of a website. So it's really helpful. And then definitely this is a very, very great asset for pulling out graphics and using graphics for your websites. All right, resource number three, and that is going to be established designers portfolios. This is something I've been using a lot lately. And look, it takes more work, but what you get out of it is so tremendously valuable. Let me show you what I mean. Let's take a look at Elementor Showcase that is showcasing the top uh, websites. We could take a look and we could see which agencies and designers and freelancers are creating some really dope work. So I could go like over here to Elementor websites for April 2022. And I could find like some designs and styles that I like, like right here, I do dig this style. And they do give credit to the design firm or the freelancer. Like for this one, it's gonna be solid digital. I could go over and check out their website. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna to go to their portfolio. Now by doing this, I'm not just getting a bunch of mock-ups, I'm not just getting a bunch of, you know, like, like uh, spec pieces and, you know, fluff. I'm getting real live projects. I'm getting stuff that, look at, this is a designer that went back and forth with a client. This is a designer that, you know, learned the client's problems and applied solutions, things like that. And I get a chance to see what it looks like and what they did. Let's say right here, I want to see their website. And look at, going based off of the screenshots and taking a look at the real website, it always looks a bit different because now we get to see how this is in real life use. And this is cool right here. Like this is a decent website right here. I see some inspirations like with color. You know, I like like this orange with this, uh, with this like teal green right here. You know, these things get the creative juices flowing. But here is where more of the value kicks in by going and using this approach to finding design inspirations. Not only are we able to see the website, but we get to go through it and see the process behind it. Like you can see here, they establish the pain points and they talk about diagnosing the pain points, applying the solutions and just the whole process behind getting to the end result. And any any professional designer. Now, if you do look at professional designers and their portfolios, all of them are going to be doing something very similar where they're going to be talking about the process. They're going to be showing how they came to that end result. Now, uh, Elementor Sites of the Month is a great place to go. I've taken a look at many just awesome, awesome design firms there. And then we get to also see websites built in Elementor, which is also a huge plus. So we know that, hey, this design isn't like impossible to build or is going to be like crazy, super custom anything like that and then we could take it to another level as well like right here i pulled up this uh top 10 new york graphic design firms now i'm going to skip right down here to pentagram because this is a firm that i know of they're globally famous like this is one of the top design firms inside the world from here we know we're working with, they're working with some of the best designers inside the world. They're working with some huge brands that have massive budgets and a lot of time is going into it. We could also do a deep dive and see what are they working on? What projects have they completed and learn more about that and find some projects that they've done using it as our design inspirations. Now, platforms like Dribbble and Behance, they're still great to go to. And I love awards.com. I love it. I'm always on it, checking out stuff, getting inspired and learning more stuff about design just because I love design. I love web design with a passion. Uh, but, you know, it does help to have some real world cases, seeing actual websites that really does help out, especially when we are trying to get inspiration for projects for clients. We want to have something more realistic, but still get inspired and have that as our guidance. Now, I do have a tip right here, a bonus tip when it comes to using design inspirations. And this is really, really important. That is looking for inspirations and being way too focused in a specific industry. For example, let's say your client is a dentist, all right? They got a dental practice and they want to build a website. You don't have to limit yourself to just looking at other dental websites for your inspiration. The thing is, there are some industries where they just all have bad websites. You know, we've had clients that their industry, all their competitors, everybody had a bad website. And in fact, what it really looked like was everybody was using their bad sites and their competitors' bad websites 
for their design direction and what they were doing. And what that did was it kept everything, you know, it limited the creativity and put everything inside this box and didn't really allow for outside ideas to come in. So if you do have an industry that you are working with for your client or for yourself, feel free to look outside of that industry for your design direction. It does not have to look like your competitors, especially if all your competitors have terrible websites. All right, I hope this helps out. And if you have a passion for design like I do, then make sure to definitely subscribe, like, and share. Do all that good YouTube stuff because that's what we're doing here. We're geeking out on design, elevating our design skills. And I'm really, really grateful that you have watched. And I'll be back again soon. All right, thank you.